If you've made the Ableton Ultimate Drum Rack before, you may have come across a very unique problem within its workflow. And that's what we're gonna solve today. It has to do with Sampler and its zone editor being able to show the proper waveform anytime you trigger a sample. We can do that with the auto select function, but we have to do a little work around to it. A big shout out to Thought Evoca for inspiring this video. He brought this unique problem up and when working through it, it made me realize again how flexible Ableton is with its tools to be able to create your own tools and make your workflow a little easier and more efficient. I hope you find some value in this video because not only will we solve a very unique problem, but with these techniques, you might be able to take them and solve your own problems with them. So let's get into it. So here we are in Ableton and I went ahead and dragged in one of my ultimate drum racks to a MIDI track here. There is a small flaw when working with the ultimate Ableton drum rack along with the sampler here. And the problem is that when we trigger any of our sounds, and I'm gonna go ahead and trigger my snare here. Well, we have all of these snares in our zone editor right here. And we can see we have eight snares. Now, when we trigger the snare, this first one here, we can see it being triggered and played in this waveform editor, which is awesome. However, when we start cycling between our sounds, you can see that the waveform editor isn't updating. But when we go back to the original, it does play. So that's a little bit of a problem because let's say you're cycling between your sounds and you say, oh man, that's the snare that I'm looking for. And you might start tweaking some of these parameters, trying to fit the sound in with your other production. The problem is though, that all of these tweaks that you do isn't going to affect the snare that you have because it's not displayed here. You would actually have to then say, I gotta find that snare. So which snare is it? You can come in here and find it and it's like, okay, this is the snare that I'm triggering. Perfect. And then you can start editing. The problem with that though is it's a little tedious because then you have to come into the zone editor and find the right snare and it's just a little bit of a hassle. It can be fixed with a little workaround and that is right up here. So when we're in our zone editor, this auto select function is what we're looking for. So what is this? The auto select function basically means all sample layers which are able to play an incoming note will become selected right here. Okay, awesome. So let's go ahead and trigger that and trigger our sample. Okay, well, it says eight of eight samples are selected. Okay, and if we cycle through our sounds, eight of eight samples are still selected. Why is that? Well, let's think about the auto select function. So as incoming MIDI notes arrive in the sampler, they are filtered by its key and velocity zones. And when the auto select is enabled, all samples that are able to play an incoming note will be displayed. So since each MIDI note is being filtered by key and velocity, we can go into both of these editors and notice all of them have the same ranges. And that's why when we trigger our snare, all of the samples are selected. Well, that means that we have to change these values here, either the key or velocity. Now, if we change the key, the problem with that is then each sound that we trigger will be associated with a particular MIDI note. And we don't necessarily want that because that defeats the whole purpose of the Ableton drum rack, meaning we trigger one MIDI note that triggers different sounds when we cycle through with this macro knob here. So key is kind of out of the question, which leaves us with just one option, the velocity zone editor. 
And this is where our workaround can begin. So in the velocity zone editor, all of the samples are selected because they all have the same range. So the first thing that we need to do is change all of these ranges. Now with all of these selected, I can grab the side here and drag all the way to the right. And I want each range to be a value of one, just like this. So when we click on one, the range is 127 to 127, one value. And that's what we want. So when we trigger our snare, oh wait, we don't have any sound. Why is that? Well, I'm on my, my computer keyboard. And when I trigger my snare, you can see right here, my keyboard actually outputs a velocity value of 99. And as you can see, there's no value associated with velocity 99 right now. We can take one of these values and put it on 99. Oh, it's actually 100. <laughs> Apologies. So 100. And look at that. We got our snare to play. That's perfect. And if we drag another one to that same velocity. Oh, well, now two of eight samples are selected in the waveform view here. Okay, well, if we move one of these, let's say the first one. Oh, well, okay, the second snare is now showing up, but it's not being triggered. Keep in mind again that the auto select will play any a sample that is able to play. We actually have the sample selector right here still on that first snare. And that's why we're not hearing the second snare, even though the velocity corresponds to it. So it's not able to play because the values, all the values aren't the same. So we're on the right track, but we need to set this up correctly. And there's a few things that we need to do which will be a little easier done than said. First thing that we want to do is have these values correspond to one particular value. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'll go and start from the bottom. And I'm going to leave that one at 127. The next one I'm going to nudge over one. So this is going to be 126. And we'll just do that for the rest. And the last value is actually going to be on 120 right here. So we have this range from 120 to 127. Perfect. However, we still have our keyboard triggering a velocity value of 99. That's why we're not hearing anything. And that's why nothing is being selected in the waveform editor. So we need to move on to this next step. We need to go to MIDI effects and grab this velocity uh, device right here. And I would suggest having the info view open on the left over here in case you want to learn about the different parameters and what they do. We're going to focus on a couple right now. So these four, the output range, the high and the low output range, and the actual value ranges here. We know that our snare in my keyboard is triggering the snare at a velocity of 99 or 100. We can change the lowest. What if we change that to 120? Because that's where we're actually starting at. Now we got our first snare. So not only is the snare playing, but we can actually see it in the waveform editor. Now, how can we cycle through the sounds? If we go between, it's still not triggering the way we want it to. We need to do one more thing. So Let's go ahead and go to this group right here. This group is the one that is cycling the kits that I have. So all the sounds are changing here. And we'll hit uh, the macro map button right there. And we'll go ahead and map the uh, low output here to the same knob as our kit selector. And we need to change these values up here in the mapping to be 120 to 127, the same values that we set up for our drums in the velocity zone editor. We'll click out of map, and now we can see it's grayed out. When we cycle through our sounds, you notice now that each snare is not only playing, but showing up in the sample selector. 
And so the problem essentially has been solved. However, there is a small little hiccup with uh, setting this up. You'll notice if we go to the sample select editor here, we're at zero, you know, we're at the beginning of our uh, kit selector here at zero. And all of the ranges for the first one plays the snare as it should. However, when we go to the second snare, we'll notice that the beginning doesn't actually play until about a quarter of the way. So three fourths of this plays the sample, but the first fourth doesn't. In the third snare, about a third doesn't play, but two thirds at the end plays. And the next one, about half doesn't play and about half does play. So you can see that as we go down uh, our kicks, not all of the values in the sample select editor are actually going to play. And when we get to the very last one, we can see it's really only the last note that plays in that entire zone right here. That's a little flaw that I haven't figured out yet. And uh, it's a little annoying, but in the grand scheme of things, if this was an issue in your workflow, at least you'll know that that is what it is if you don't hear anything being triggered you might need to just change the value a little bit for the snare to adjust and play. That's really the only thing, but in the grand scheme of things, it shows up in the waveform editor, it plays the sound, and that's exactly what we wanted. So essentially, problem solved. Now there's one other thing. Uh, you might ask, does this, you know, since we have, since we're triggering a certain velocity value, will that change the volume of my sound? Yes, it's going to change the volume of your sound, especially let's say you have 127 snares in this sampler loaded up and you know you have 127 samples and you go from one to 127 here. Well, when you trigger the first sound at the velocity of one, it is going to trigger a velocity of one and it's going to be very quiet. I would suggest simply doing it in the sample editor here. So if it's very quiet, uh, just adjust the volume within the, the sampler's volume right here. That'll only affect that particular sample. And you notice if we go to a different snare, the volume is at zero, but the one that we changed is different. That'd be a perfect way to adjust your sounds to be uniform level. So that's a little workaround for the velocity changes. However, from 120 to 127, there's not much of a difference. Um, you might hear it a little bit, but there's workarounds that you can have. You can do this for every single drum pad that you have and set up the auto select and do exactly the same thing for each one of these. And you'll be able to cycle through all of your sounds and have them show up in the waveform editor view right here. So there it is guys, just a couple tips on working with the ultimate drum rack in Ableton. Hope these things have kind of helped you out. Um, they have for me and it's kind of been interesting working with this project. So if you found any use in this video, please leave a like, it helps a lot. Uh, subscribe to the channel. I'm doing more content like this for Ableton tutorials uh, and just music projects in general. I have a few really interesting projects coming up from an audio visual perspective within Ableton. So. Look out for those also, man. Hope this has helped you guys. My name is Intempus. See you guys.